Okay, today we are going to look at the 2006 AP test. This, uh, we are going to look at question number four. Question number four was a non-calculator. The national average was 3.49. So as usual, our goal is to always be above the national average. So I'm going to take you through this problem and tell you how you can get all nine points. So pro this problem talks about a rocket, and it gives you a b uh, table of data. And the data is representing the velocity over different periods of time. And and so rocket A has a positive velocity, tells you that its initial height is zero, so it does start at ground level, and it looks at, a at different values of velocity over an 80 second time interval. Now part A is asking you to work with the average acceleration of rocket A over the time interval. Now when it's working with part A, I'll make my pen a little bit darker here. When it asks for average acceleration, what you have to realize is that's really just saying what's the average slope of velocity, because we know that acceleration is the slope of velocity. So all we're really doing is a slope formula. So we are going to have to figure out v of 80 minus v of 0. This is just like y minus y over 80 minus 0. Just a standard slope formula. You have your v's, that is representing your y variable, and then your t's, which is your x variable. So you look up at your table and you say, okay, v of 80 is 49. So we're going to put 49 minus v of 0, is, it tells us it is 0, over 80 minus 0. Well, excuse me, I, that should be a 5. This should be a 5. Get rid of that. So it should be 49 minus 5, which is 44 over 80. Now, the beauty of the AP test is they don't care if you reduce that or not. So you're welcome to leave it as 44 over 80. Or if you just are in the habit of reducing, you could write it as 11 20ths. And it does make the point of saying indicate units. Now, acceleration, acceleration is in feet for, per second squared. And I know if you've had a physics class more recently, that's probably more comfortable for you. And that's all you have to do in Part A. Now, Part A was only worth one point on the AP test, and it was just for the answer. If you do not have the unit and you still have 11 20ths or 44 80ths, you would still get a point. They actually dealt with the units later in the problem. So you do not have to worry about units at the start. Letter B. Letter B wants to know the meaning of the integral, uh, the definite integral from 10 to 70 of V of t in terms of the rocket's flight. We're going to do a midpoint Riemann sum with three subintervals. Now, the first th thing they want is, a, is an explanation. So this is what I wrote. I wrote that when you integrate, now keep in mind, you integrate to accumulate. So what that means is when I integrate velocity, I get the distance traveled. So I wrote that it is the distance traveled. from 10 to 70 seconds in feet because distance will be covered in feet since the velocity is feet per second. So that's my explanation. That was actually one point on the rubric. It's just explaining what does it mean. One point and somewhere in there you need to talk about distance. Then it wants to actually find it. So what you're doing is I, I kind of made a little number line for myself. I want to do, a, sorry, a messy line, but I want to do a midpoint approximation. So if I'm going from 10 to 70, and I'm splitting it into three intervals, then I'm going to go from 10 to 30, from 30 to 50, and from 50 to 70. Now, change colors here so it shows up a little bit better. I want the middle of each of these intervals. So I want to know what's happening at 20, what's happening at 40, and what's happening at 60. So let's see if I can get even brighter here on my design. So I need to know what is V of 20. And again, I'm looking at my table. V of 20 is 22. I want to know what is V of 40. V of 40, looking at my table, is 35. And I want to know V of 60. And V of 60, looking at my table, is 44. So now to do a midpoint, remember midpoint Riemann is just breaking it up into rectangles. My rectangles are all 20 units wide. So they're all 20 
by my different heights here, 22, 35, and 44. Fastest way to do that is just to add those up together and then multiply by 20 at the end. You could do 20 times 22, 20 times 35, 20 times 44, but it isn't necessary. Now, it does take a little work because you don't have a calculator. You end up with 101 times 20. You're probably going to have to do a little longhand multiplication. You should get 2,020 feet. The way the AP test graded this was you got one point for the explanation that it was the distance. You got one point for recognizing that you have to use V of 20, V of 40, and V of 60 because those are the midpoints. And you get one point for the actual value, 2020. Now, what they don't give you a point here, again, is the units. Here's how they dealt with units. If you got the units right in part A, so you had this units of feet per second squared, and you got the unit right in part B of feet, you give yourself another point. It's all or nothing, though. You can't have one unit right and one unit wrong and get half points. There are no half points. So, so far, we have one point for A, three points for B, and one point for the, the units for A and B. So now we're on to part C, which gives you a totally different rocket, giving you uh, a different acceleration. And I'm just going to write it again just so I can refer to it, of this equation. It wants to figure out, it says the initial height is zero, and the initial velocity is two. It wants to figure out which of the two rockets is traveling faster at 80 seconds. So the first thing I need to do, I have acceleration, I need to integrate acceleration to get velocity. Because I don't have a table of data on this rocket. I only have an equation that represents the particular rocket's path. So I'm going to integrate this. It is a U sub, so I'm going to come off to the side. And it really depends on how much work you want to show. You're not going to need to show every step. You can do a little bit in your head. What you'll notice is a perfect U sub. It is, the 3 can come out front. It is a u to the negative 1 half with no adjustment. When we integrate that, we get 2u to the positive 1 half, but it's times the 3 that was already there. So I'm just going to write it, put the u back in. So my velocity formula is 6 radical t plus 1 plus c. I do have enough information to find C, though. They tell me that at two, uh, the initial velocity is 2 feet per second. So that means when the time is 0, so that would just be a 6, the velocity is 2, which means that your C value is 4. So now we have this much nicer looking acceler velocity equation. My velocity equation is 6 radical t plus 1 plus 4, or excuse me, minus 4, which would be a negative 4, negative 4, so this is a negative 4. Now it wants to know, what about at 80? Which one's going faster? So at 80 for this one, when I put 80 in, I get the square root of 81, which is 9, so I get 6 times 9 minus 4, which is 54 minus 4, which is 50. So the velocity of rocket B at 80 is 50 feet per second. The velocity of rocket A, we can look at the table and say, look at the very end of the chart, is 49 feet per second. And that is, again, just reading the chart. So what we can determine is that the rocket B is going faster. Now, that was worth four points. You get one point for being able to get your basic integration before you forgot C, just the 6 radical t plus 1. You're getting one point that you included the idea that there is a plus C. There is an initial condition. And then you get one point for using that initial condition. And finally, you get one point for figuring out that the rocket at 80 is 50 feet per second and comparing it. So that's actually all one point, that you get 50 and you understand that 50 is bigger than 49. So there are four points total there, the basic integration, the plus C, which is a really easy point to get, um, going through and using the initial condition to find C to be negative 4, and then finally your final answer. And that's how you get 9 out of 9 points on a question that national average was only about 3.5. And, and I think that with our uh, work that we've done, we should be able to do that.